Hello to you, hello to you. I am ASMR Weasel, and I hope I today can help make you feel calm, relaxed, and good, and help you feel those light good feelings inside. So today I'm going to be talking about Norway, because I did an opinion poll uh, recently, and Norway, AS, ASMR about Norway, was the most popular choice. So I'm essentially going to be making like four videos about Norway the two coming weeks. But I ho anyway, I hope your day is going great. And even if it isn't, I, I hope just me talking about Norway just can help make some of you feel calm, relaxed and good. So this will be a talking video where I just talk about my home country, which I love by the way. I love my country. Uh, so you can see two Norwegian flags behind me and today I'm just going to be talking some general information about Norway and um, I think I'll begin by just talking about Norwegian nature. So for those of you who haven't been to Norway and also this is going to be a soft spoken video by the way for those of you who haven't been to Norway and Norway's nature is uh, a lot of beautiful valleys, uh, forests and mountain ranges really, or mountains if you wish. And that's, uh, and, and there are of course a few harbour cities and towns as well. Um, the town I live in for example is actually a harbour, harbour town. It's a town with uh, a river which flows into the ocean essentially. Uh, but I live in the suburban area, so yeah. Uh, this town I live in was based in was really a full-scale harbour town based in fishing and stuff uh, a few centuries ago but now of course it's become more of a modern type of city so it's, there's not much of that going on, uh, going on here anymore it's become more of a modern type of town city you know but uh, anyway I think the area I live in is beautiful too and I think a lot of areas in Norway are really beautiful. So we have these fo this green forests and some of the forests really just um, they really emanate the feeling of a fairy tale, you know, because sometimes the woods and forests of Norway can be really deep and mysterious, a little foggy at times even. Mm. Uh, or they can just be green and beautiful, depending on what kind of weather it is. You know, and winter time in Norway, if you enjoy snow, can be very magical. You know, because um, now if you live in, I, I, I don't do that, but if you live in the far northern areas of Norway, you can at times see auroras in the sky. Auroras in the sky. I live a little too far south to see those, but, uh, but they can be seen for those who live further north in Norway. And they have, of course, spectacular sights which many tourists also journey to experience. Uh, there's also... Mm, <laughs> uh, and of course in winter time it's magical because there can be a lot of snow and stuff. And when the valleys and forests become really snowy and great, I sort of live in a valley place with a lot of green and forests myself. And at winter and Christmas is truly magical. It really gives you a great Christmas feeling. So yeah, but I, I love living in Norway at summer too or any time of the year. Really. And uh, you know, there are of course a lot of towns and cities. Um, some of the most famous cities and towns of Norway is probably Oslo, uh, Trondheim, Stavanger and Bergen. These are probably four of the most famous cities of Norway. There are a few others as well, of course, but I never. Uh, mm. So, and Oslo is the capital, of course. It was actually named Christiania a few centuries ago after a Danish king, but it was changed to Oslo about a century ago. So, Oslo is the capital of Norway. It's, not too, it's actually not too far from the town I live in, but... Uh, so I've been in the capital a few times. There is a lot of stuff to see and do in Norway if you enjoy taking a peek at nature. You know, just just sort of enjoying the 
like NATO landscape or just going around and just finding the various stuff it is to do in Norway. I could advise visiting the Nidaros Cathedral in, uh, in Trondheim, uh, in which the monk of the Nidaros Cathedral is said to hunt its steps. It's apparent there's this uh, legend about a ghostly monk from centuries ago who still haunts the cathedral. I've actually been to the cathedral. I didn't see the monk, but I went, um, I went up the stairs onto the top, uh, which was actually fun, which was many years ago. I will give you a warning about that the stairs, the stairways and the stairs up to the top can be slightly claustrophobic. Just giving you a warning about that. I made it through because I don't really have claustrophobia, but just giving you a heads up about that. But it's not too bad. No. Anyway, uh, so that was me talking a little about the nature of Norway. I think the other thing I can talk about is Norwegian fairy tales, and you can see trolls behind me. You know, and trolls is a central theme of Norwegian fairy tales. Yeah. So, these type of things, this one has lost its nose. <laughs> uh, it wasn't like this when I bought it, but you know, things happen over the years. Uh, these, these are trolls. Mm. And um, they feature a lot in Norwegian fairy tales, and you can see the troll here with the Norwegian flag. And trolls uh, is a central theme, as I said, of Norwegian fairy tales. I'm sorry if I repeated myself a little bit. Um, um, and you can buy this at pretty much most, if not any, Norwegian souvenir shop. You know, if you ever visit Norway, take a troll with you home. You know, it's one of the symbols of Norway, really, almost. And you can also see it's, you can see it has like this box in its hand, and when it has sky, it is on a, a sky, it, it goes skying, you know, yeah. Uh, because skying is a very Norwegian thing. Mm. No. So yeah, we are, so, we are very cute and we are very pretty. I really enjoy it. And then you can see a fairy tale book here. And this is Aspensjnen Mo. And Aspensjnen Mo are these Norwegian people, I think, from the 19th century. Uh, like, um, like about 150 years ago or so. Or a little, or a, about who gathered, who, who gathered uh, Norwegian fairy tales, mm. uh, fairy tales which people had, which people had told in Norway for a lot of ages, but they decided to write them down. So essentially, these are, these are stories about a lot of famous Norwegian fairy tale figures, like for example the Ashlad. Mm, Askeladen in Norwegian, or the Ashlad, if you wish. Mm. And, uh, and the Ashlad is probably one of the most famous Norwegian fairy tales figures. The Ashlad is eternally optimistic. He is a poor guy who often sits uh, by the ash, uh, by the oven in the living room, and was uh, often, and which is essentially led him to by his two brothers uh, who, who does, his two brothers who often mock him to call him mockingly the Ashlad because he often sits by the ash in the oven you know mm. and uh, he uh, but he, he but of course uh, often he uh, in some of the fairy tales he and his two brothers are out on adventures and it's of course but it's and even talk to his two brothers mock him. It's always the Ashlad that wins out in the end. And it's he who wins the princess and half the kingdom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because that was a thing in Norwegian like fairy tale. If you performed if if I could perform a certain thing for the king, they would win the princess and half the kingdom. <laughs> and and of course there's a lot of troll in some of the trolls in some of the Norwegian fairy tales too. For example, in one of them, the Ashlad is actually uh, competing with a troll by a food race or an eating race. They eat porridge, but the Ashlad tricks the troll, and sort of the Ashlad just puts the porridge in his bag, which he pretends is his stomach. 
and when the troll the troll uh, eat, the troll also eats but it doesn't get how the ashlad can eat with much porridge so the ashlad tricks the trolls the troll I mean and say what he what he makes more place what he makes more place for the porridge in his stomach by cutting open uh, his stomach with a knife but of course the ashlad is only uh, cutting open the back so we essentially tricks the troll into cutting open his stomach and both the troll dies and the ashlad gets all the rich riches in the cave which the troll has hoarded yeah you know and the trolls in the fairy tales will often say but I can smell Christian Christian blood or Christian's blood mm, that's a very common thing in Norwegian fairy tales for the trolls to say anyway so yeah, uh, and that's of course when they encounter humans, they say that. So that was just a little about Norwegian fairy tales. And the next thing I could talk about is some of Norwegian history, just a slight bit. Norway got its own constitution in 1814, when we got independence from Denmark, which had ruled Norway for four centuries, during what's called a long night in Norwegian history. Mm. But in 1814 we got our own constitution. We was in we was in, we was we was however forced into a union with Sweden. But but in 1905 in 19 in 1905 uh, the union with Sweden was dissolved, and Norway and Norway um, Norway officially dissolved it dissolved it on the. Mm, on the 7th of June 1907, but in Sweden it wasn't accepted before the 26th of October that same year in 1905, that same year. So 1905 is the time of the dissolution of the union with Sweden and when Norway became fully 100% independent and when we also got our own king. So that's a very historic time in Norway. There are a few military installations, cannons and stuff, including a few cannons and in my town actually, which is actually from this time, because Norway was afraid that Sweden wouldn't accept Norway exiting the Union, so we were prepared for war with Sweden. We were afraid that war with Sweden would come. Thankfully, war was averted, and now the various military installations, cannons from that time, is just a relic, a reminder of uh, of this of that time and of the preparations people made in case war with Sweden would come. Mm. But it didn't come, so yeah. Of course, so Norway has mostly been independent ever since 1905, except during the Second World War, when Nazi Germany invaded and occupied Norway for five years before Nazi Germany fell and they retreated. But ever since 1945, Norway has been fully independent. And hopefully it will stay that way. Mm. Uh, also, Norway has... Norway is a monarchy, but, but, the, but the monarch or the king only has ceremonial powers. Ever since 1905, we have, on, we have only had kings, but uh, and, uh, after a current king, the crown prince will also become king, so the next guy will also be a king. But after him again, but, but, his, but, but our crown prince eldest is a daughter, and she is set to become queen in a few decades, or, or uh, many, many decades from now. Uh, uh, mm. So when our current king dies, we'll get a king, but when our next king dies, we'll get a queen, and she will become historic as Norway's first queen in Norwegian history if the monarchy lasts that long, and I'm pretty sure it will, because the king is like super popular in Norway. I don't remember what it was on the poll, but it was like 80% of the population or so which supported the monarchy. The king is like one of the most popular figures in Norway. Mm. There are people in Norway who want republic, but they are in the minority. Mm. So yeah, the monarchy is too popular, you know, and that's because our monarchy is very people friendly. And each constitution day, which is the 17th of May, 
the royal family which, which will is on the balcony and stands waving to the crowds mm, assembled outside, which is often the crowds of the children parade, uh, which is uh, which is every 17th of May when what's when children from various schools from all over the country parade in various cities with Norwegian flags, mm. you know, and waves them. Can you show me? You know, I did this many years when I was myself a child. Yeah, we, we, you know, in Norway there is no military parade. I mean the royal guard, uh, the, the guard which stands guard outside the castle to guard the king, actually has a short parade that day. But, but Norway, but the most famous parade of Constitution in Norway is, uh, is the children's parade. And I participated in these parades when I was a child. And you just you sing Norwegian national songs and national anthems, and you wave the flag, you know. Uh, and then there are thousands of parents and adults lined to watch the children's parade. So yeah, I am totally convinced that if it was, if it was a, if it was a prize for a national day parade in the world, Norway would totally win it. I mean, yeah, we just would totally win. Anyway, uh, but uh, the act Norway, but the actual uh, the actual figure with most power in Norway is the prime minister. He is the leader of the political system and is the and he is the actual figure in Norway. So he is essentially the one who rules the country. And uh, mm, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there has we have we have had we. We have had two female prime ministers in Norwegian history, and we just recently had a female prime minister who sat for eight years of the Conservative Party, but now it's Jonas Gahr Støre, who is the prime minister, and he is uh, this uh, multimillionaire who is leader of the Labour Party, and who, and he and the left wing won the last election, so he is the prime minister now, and he has been prime minister for almost two years. Mm. So and he is essentially, and he is in a coalition government uh, with the center party. Mm. So yeah, um, and uh, that's how the Norwegian system work, works. It's a parliamentary system, and the prime minister, the prime minister is the one who is uh, in power, sort of. Uh, and there is elections every four years, and in Norway, it's not possible to call a new election. There are no term limit, limits, so the prime minister can run for endless terms, but usually most prime ministers doesn't sit for more than eight years in total, really. But, but, but the last prime minister, Ernest Holberg, was still the leader of the Conservative Party, or Høyre, which, is, which, is, which it is called in Norwegian, which translates to right in English. She is still the leader of the right party, and she tried to run for re-election to a third period uh, in 2021. She didn't succeed, but she's still the leader in, and intends to run in 2025 again. So she may become prime minister yet again. We'll see. But for now, uh, Jonas Gaste is the prime minister. Now, during a period, the government can collapse, but it usually doesn't do so. No government has collapsed since 2000. So, no collapses isn't super common, at least not in recent Norwegian history. So it, it looks likely like we will have Støre uh, remain prime minister, despite some dubious polls, until 2025. And I suspect he'll probably try to run for re-election to prime minister as well. Yeah, as I said, he's a multimillionaire and he's, uh, and he's the current prime minister of Norway. Mm. And he leads the Labour Party, you know. He was, he was previously a very popular minister of foreign. Minister of Foreign Affairs in uh, the government of Jens Stoltenberg uh, many years ago. And I'm sure some of you have heard about Jens Stoltenberg. He is the Secretary General of NATO. You know, and he was formerly the Norwegian Prime Minister and the previous leader of the Labour Party. Anyway, so the King is essentially the ceremonial head, but the Prime Minister is the one with actual power. You know, so for you, you US citizens, the prime minister is essentially the equ the equivalent of your president. Mm. Anyway, yeah. 
So we'll see if the or prime minister gets re-elected or not, and if the left side wins again and remains in government, or if the right returns. But to be honest, while there are some differences between the two opposing political sides in Norway, uh, the differences aren't as great as there is in some other countries. And there are, of course, aside from the traditional left and right parties, there are, of course, some other parties as well. I'll talk the Greens, the Envo party is uh, the environment, pro environment, environment party, is uh, is more um, is more or less considered in the left wing. They sort of stand a little on their own too, because you have uh, you have parties which lay either left of the established left or or even right of the established right. Like for example, the Progress Party is considered the closest thing that Norway has to a far-right party. They, occur, they, were of, they were actually in government just a few years ago. It was the first time in government. Yeah. Mm. But, they quit, they, but they left the government in 2020. Yeah. Mm. But uh, they may return to government later if the conservative wins. It's possible to say. But anyway, uh, that was me just telling you guys a little about Norway. Hope you just appreciate this video and me just telling you various random stuff about Norway and I promise you more Norwegian content videos will come. Hope you have a great day, all you guys. I appreciate you. I wish you all the best.